So I'm here with Nick Gill, strength and conditioning coach for the All Blacks. How are you doing today, Nick? Yeah, good, thanks, Ben. How are you? Very good. How are your feelings for the final this weekend? Oh, yeah, she's uh, she's going to be an interesting game, that's for sure. The boys are boys are ready, and um, yeah, we're just hoping we can do the do the damage. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. So tell people how long you've been involved with the All Blacks. What's your sort of background in strength and conditioning? What have you done before that? Give us a bit of background. I've been with the All Blacks for eight years now, or nine years actually, nine years. Um, and my role with the team is um, basically their conditioning, their strength and strength and um, conditioning. So um, it's a reasonably large job because we have sort of 33 players here at the moment, and um, yeah, big job to keep them ready to to dominate in test matches. Nice. And I think I read before that you were involved in Olympic rowing. Is that right? Oh, I was. I um, I used to work with the rowers when I started with rugby, and um, I've actually just started working with um, the New Zealand track cycling team as well. So. Um, I like to sort of split my year into different sports so that I can keep learning and um, obviously learn from other sports and apply them to, to other areas of, um, of, I suppose, my biggest passion, which is rugby. So how would the unique demands of rugby, say, vary to other sports? What do you think the unique aspects of rugby are fitness-wise? Oh, rugby's it's hugely challenging because, you know, you have these athletes of all shapes and sizes. You have really big, strong um uh, slow players, you have these amazing thoroughbred athletes um, and they all have different jobs on the field uh, but essentially they all have to be extremely strong, extremely powerful um, and be able to run around and do their job for 80 minutes so it's extremely challenging because you're not just trying to get stronger, you're trying to be fitter um, and obviously be able to catch and pass a ball and make good decisions so uh, I find it extremely challenging, that's why I've been doing it for so long because it just keeps getting harder and I suppose um, more detailed around what we can and how we can do things. How has it changed say over the last nine years since you started in terms of conditioning? Have the athletes got bigger like it appears to us on the telly and so forth? Yeah, no, good question. The, um, the athletes are definitely bigger uh, without a doubt. I think just in my nine years um, you know, I've seen an increase in our uh, increase in size of our locks of about seven or eight kilos, you know, a kilo a year. And these guys have been in the program for that long, and then you know they start off 112 kilos, now 120. Um, and that's not across the board, but but generally speaking, you know most of our our forwards um, are getting bigger. And what comes with that is more intensity in the collision, so more risk of injury. So again, that's the other huge part of my job, which is injury prevention, because you know if the player is strong but injured all the time, well, it's, there's no point; they won't keep getting better as a rugby player. Um, every injury is, is numbers of sessions missed, number of games missed. You're not going to improve as a player if you keep missing games. So, you know, that's our big challenge. And, yeah, the players are far more professional. Um, and the, the tolerance to work is, is massive. You know, we used, to, we used to have to pretty much just do as little as possible. You know, whereas now, you know, sometimes I'm blown away with how much we can get into them without them falling over. So... You know, some days we'll have three sessions a day that are intense, intense sessions. Um, very focused and, and purposeful, but, um, you know, seven or eight years ago that would have been impossible. So that's sort of rugby at the top level. How does it say the demands at lower levels or, you know, not quite the, the elite of the elite. What do you feel advice for sort of people like that? Yeah, it's interesting because I get a lot of a lot of people emailing me about um, you know tips and how to improve and you know can I see what the All Blacks are doing and 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 it's it's interesting. It's something I've definitely learned over time. Um, I've been in rugby for 15 years now um, since in New Zealand at least it became truly professional and you know what what this team and what we do has reinforced is that it's all about how well you do things not how much you do not whether you're using the latest gimmick um, you know I'm sitting here in the English rugby gym with you and um, you know they have lots of gimmicks in here and lots of instrumentation and lots of stuff we don't have because we travel um, so we have other issues but what it has reinforced my time with the All Blacks is you know we do the really basic things really well you know, it's not about whether you can squat more than Joey down the road. It's how well you squat, how consistently you squat, whether you're activating your full um, 
I suppose, posterior chain and getting the most out of what you got. So, you know, simple simple things done really well and consistently. Mm-hmm. Is it definitely something I felt or seen maybe, whether it's true or not, is, is it how does strength in the gym correlate to the field? It doesn't seem to me, in my opinion, correlate, but is it all, not so much? Oh, I think there's definitely, um, there's definitely a link. Um, but you can have the, be the strongest person in the gym, but the worst player in the contact area. Because you know, there's technique and how to run in and out of contact. There's a skill required. Um, there's an attitude required. So again, you could be the strongest guy in the gym, but not have the right attitude when going into contact. You could be too high. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you could have the strongest legs and ass um, in the world, but your your body height is wrong. So there would be a correlation if all things were equal. Uh, but often you can have a very weak athlete in the gym be amazing in the collision area because they've got the technique right and the mindset or attitude right. Interesting. Um, what's life like living in the All Blacks training camp? Oh, look, the All Blacks environment's amazing. I love it. And um, keep being asked how long I'm going to do it for. And, you know, hopefully they have to wheel me away in a wheelchair. But um, I love it. And it's, it's extremely high pressure. It's extremely hard work. And, you know, you miss your family and you miss home a lot because we're on the road for sort of 20 weeks a year. Um, but it's in, incredibly rewarding. Um, the players are amazing men. Um, each and every one of them are amazing individuals who, you know, you just love. And um, and so for most of us in this environment, we just we love what we do, and um, we love the men we do it with, um, and the woman we, woman we do it with. So yeah, it's uh, incredibly grateful to be able to do what I do. And is there like a lot of sitting around board time or do you amuse yourself? How do you, what happens when you're away from the camera? <laughs> board time, like yeah, that? no, that's a good point. Um, I suppose early on in the year you sort of, you get your own training in and, you know, you, you go for runs and you, you go to the gym and you, you do your thing and it's, you, you're full of energy. And as the season goes on, you start finding time just to be able to just lock yourself away and just, just have some alone time because, you know, we're, with a, we're a group of 50 men and um, sometimes you just need space. So, so really, it's 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 um yeah, it's a bit of a roller coaster. Uh, depends on outcomes, depends on mood of the camp, depends on our performances, depends on injuries, um, and sometimes there's no free time. You know, and uh, I think the medical team and the and the fitness team, you know, we we're incredibly busy. We're with the players pretty much from from seven thirty eight o'clock till six o'clock every day. Um, so we're incredibly um, not stressed but busy. And I guess you spend a lot of time also so busy because you're working with the players who are playing and the players who aren't playing. How do you address the two different sort of groups of players, match day team and the other team? Is no, exactly the same. Yeah. No, so whether you're playing or not, you know, you're, you, we're still always focused on trying to improve you as a player. So, yeah, not a lot of difference. Um, we don't separate the squad at all. Um, every person on the team has their role that week. And, um, yeah, it's, there's, no, there's no them and us. There's no difference at all. What's the atmosphere like after you win a tournament, World Cup, Tri Nations? Um, well, I don't know what the environment's going to be like on Saturday night because I'm not sure how we're going to go. But um, you know, obviously, when we win, we we celebrate our wins, we enjoy our wins, and um, you know, it's always incredibly pleasing to to see how hard we all work and then we get the result. And you know, after a loss, you know, it's in complete contrast to that. You know, you work your butt off, everyone and you don't quite get there. So, you know, it's a very quiet, um, sad shed when we lose. So, you know, we bottle that up and use it for motivation for the next week, and that's pretty much how we how we operate. Nice. 